October is our missions month. So let us uh, not forget this important emphasis in our church to remind us that uh, aside from being Christians who worship every Sunday and uh, serve the Lord in church activities, we are beyond that uh, missionaries to spread the word of God to the whole world until he comes. And so this month, our theme is uh, in connection with our missions, love constrains me. We are reminded if we are in love with the Lord, we have to obey him and we have to do his will. And uh, in connection with this uh, missions month, we are studying right now the character of God that is uh, very important also, our all-powerful God, omnipotent God. So since January, we have been studying all the different uh, attributes of God to remind us that He is a complete and powerful and wonderful God. As we think about missions, we must remember that when we go out to support our missionaries and to spread out the gospel, our God is all-powerful. He will always be with us and we should never be fear, fear or uh, be uh, under, underestimate the things that, that the Lord has given us. And our theme about all powerful God leads us to fulfill the mission in the power of God. Uh, because uh, uh, only by his power we can fulfill the command that he has given us. So in connection with our message this morning, I entitled my message, as I already uh, mentioned, Our All-Powerful God. As I was preparing my message, I just remember a story about a great artist uh, in, uh, uh, in Europe, Leonardo da Vinci. Once in his uh, life, he wanted, aside from painting and uh, uh, making wonderful sculptures that uh, until now is being appreciated by the world, he wanted to discover the basic truth of all knowledge. And so all of li his life, and aside from being an artist, a painter, and a sculptor, he looked for something that would be the starting point of all truth in the whole world. Well, sadly, Leonardo da Vinci died without finding what is that basic thing in all of life. But today, for us Christians, we know we have uh, been taught and we have uh, been uh, reminded about what is the basic thing that a Christian should do. Aside from the fact that our God is powerful, because he is powerful, the most important thing he wants us to do is to spread out the gospel to the whole world. At the same time, be involved in missions ourselves if we have the opportunity. At the same time, support missions, support our missionaries as uh, members of the church. So there are two things again that we would like to take up in connection with this. First, God is omnipotent absolute and second, God's omnipotence applied to our lives. He can do all things, so the word all-powerful or omnipotence. But uh, one uh, Christian theologian said, he's not only an omnipotent God, he's also omnipotence absolute. So when he is um, omnipotence absolute, He's more than just being omnipotent. But he is omnipotence that is perfect. Omnipotence that has no equal. Omnipotence that is beyond all the power of anybody in the world or in whole creation. So here in the points that I wrote here, uh, it means, first of all, all strength is under his sovereignty. Tanang kusog. Under his sovereignty. This is the word omnipotence. 
So this is expressed in so many ways in the Bible. In Psalm 29, verse 3 and 5, it tells that the voice of the Lord when he speaks, the earth trembles. Do you remember? Maybe the voice of your grandfather. He was a very strong person, maybe, very strong personality. Maybe your father, he has a big voice. When he speaks, it seems all of you grandchildren or all of you children tremble before him. So maybe that's a small illustration of the omnipotence of God. His voice is so fearful when he commands and he tells us to do this and that. In fact, the Bible says in the word that when God speaks, you know, even the waves and the winds behave because he is so powerful and so respectable. So have you heard the voice of the Lord? On the other hand, we studied last time about uh, the prophet Elijah. But when the Lord spoke to Elijah, he did not use his big voice. He only used his small whisper in a still, small voice. Now why did he speak that way? Because he knew that Elijah was discouraged. And he was ready to, ready to quit serving the Lord. So the Lord was very understanding. And so he spoke to him in a still, small voice. So either way, every Christian should recognize the voice of God and should learn to obey and follow it. The other expressions in the Bible about the strength of God is his finger. The Bible many times mentioned about the finger of God in Exodus chapter 8 when uh, God sent his judgment in, in Egypt during the time of Moses and different plagues that came to Egypt the word of God says uh, it was the finger of God that uh, made Egypt realize how strong God is so God who is omnipotent even his finger is very strong. So which of your finger is strong? Is it your thumb? <laughs> is it, or is it this one? Well, with God, any finger of God is very strong, I tell you. And even just finger of God could command the seas or the storm. And we have to obey him and respect him. So is God using his finger to speak to you? Or to teach you and to lead you? follow him. Now in connection with the finger, the Bible also speaks about the hand of God again in Exodus. The hand of God Exodus 9.3 The hand of God led Israel. The hand of God led the disciples. The hand of God led the church of Jesus Christ. So the hand of God leads Christians today or fathers and mothers the hand of God when we have great needs the lord opens his hand to provide for us when we need protection the, his hand is there to protect us from the things that we are afraid of so have you felt the hand of god like i used to tell you when you were young children were young at the in the middle of the night when you walk home and it's very very dark like uh, if you live in the city like me, who grew up in, uh, in the country, in the countryside. So at night when I go home from playing with my friends, it's very dark. And sometimes I trembled, you know. As I told you, I would close my eyes and then I would run, you know. I memorized the road already straight home. So I just close my eyes and run. And then we'll open it once our, our house is there. So it's very funny, but... Uh, you know, God is very strong and we can depend on his hand. Job 40 verse 9 uh, tells also of the arms of the Lord, the arm of God. So how strong and powerful is the arm of God? You remember when you were a child, your father will take you up into his arms and embrace you when you are sad when you're angry, when you're disappointed, he will just embrace you in his arms and you are comforted. 
So that's another expression of the strength and the omnipotence of God to all of us. Also in Job chapter 26, verse 14, it also says when God thunders, the whole world will flee. So have you experienced walking alone one afternoon or one morning and then the clouds will come and then there will be a, a thunder boom. How do you feel? You feel so afraid. It's like the voice of God or the anger of God or the, the person of God is very, very powerful. So we have to be, to respect him. And to a certain extent, we have to fear him because he is such a great and marvelous omnipotent God. So these are expressions of uh, the omnipotence of God, the voice of God, the finger of God, the hand of God, or the arm of God, the thunder. So be careful. When God deals with you this way, listen and obey him. So, number two here, can, you know, God in his omnipotence, he can accomplish anything? Anything, yes, anything. Uh, this was uh, the promise of God in Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. He told Abraham, I can do anything for you and your sons. Abraham said, you know, Lord, I married, but my wife is already an old woman. How can I have, I have a child and become a great nation? The Lord said, no. Trust me, I have a great hand. I am very, very powerful. I can give you a son, and I will make your son a great nation if you just believe me. You remember? Uh, during the time of King Saul and King Saul's kingdom was just a weak kingdom and he was sur surrounded by enemies, the Philistines and then during the time of uh, a war against the Philistines King Saul started to assert his uh, force but what could he do? Only King Saul during the time had a sword and then his armor bearer had a sword and a javelin and then they were surrounded by the enemies so the enemies challenged them well he said if you are brave enough you come down and fight with us and according to first Samuel chapter 8 you know uh, Jonathan the son of King Saul two of them stood in the middle of the field and then the Philistines surrounded them but they stood their ground and killed the, the Philistines. And then Jonathan rallied the Israelites and then they ran after the Philistines and they had great victory during that time. Prince Jonathan, another story which we read about Gideon, you know, in, during the time the judges, there was a need to fight against the enemy. And uh, so what will they do? Gideon said, I, the Lord has chosen me to fight the enemy. You come and follow me. So thousands of Israelites came. And then the Lord said, there are too many soldiers. About 100,000 men came. And so the Lord said, you make the men, you know, drink by the brook. And then choose only those who are very careful in taking the water and drinking from their palm and then uh, looking around. And there were only 300 of, of the thousands. 300 only did that. And the Lord said, you choose the 300, prepare them for battle. But Jin Yun said, Lord, there are only 300. And the Lord said, it does not matter whether by many of the few or by few, the Lord can give you victory. And we know all the story. Do you remember when we attended Sunday school when you were very young and you heard about the story of Gideon and his 300? And the Lord did that? 300. And they had the victory. Well, in our modern times, we see that. If you read his history or read the news, way back in 1967, Israel, you know, surrounded by the Arabs. 
They only defeated the Arabs, maybe about more than 200, 300 soldiers around them. They defeated them in only seven days. Have you read about that, young people? 1967, maybe you were not even born during that time. But it was the very famous seven days war of Israel against the Arabs. Seven days! Reminds us, you know, of the Greek Jordanese 300, <laughs> thousands of years ago. So, here it is. It does not matter by God because he's omnipotent. Whether there, there are many or by few, just believe him and obey him. And uh, all power is with him. So, how about you? Are there many things that you are afraid of today, <laughs> this week? So, remember... Gideon, remember Jonathan, remember the people of God and all of those who fought with him. Well, uh, the next thought here I wrote, wrong, wrong illus illusions about power. You know, sometimes we have wrong ideas about power. These are the questions which I know when I was young, many of my friends asked me, and when I was a young student pastor many years ago in Gimaras, people would ask me this. So I'm just repeating this to you, but they are absurd. They are impossible. They are not the right kind of questions. But just for, uh, you know, opening our minds, one question. Can God save, I mean, uh, can God make a rock that he cannot c carry? You know, God is creator. So one, uh, one wise person said, can God create a rock that he cannot carry? Pwede na. Makahimo ang Diyos ang bato, nga di madala? Is that right kind of question about God? Another question is, can God commit wrong without destroying his holiness? Pwede ang gino makahimo sa sayop? Pero holy gapon siya? Diyos man siya. Another question, which my friends before told us, asked me, can God turn a natural man into a woman? Pwede ko na mahimos ang ginoo ang lalaki, mga babae. Well, today there are many men who want to be, make themselves women. Diba? The ganza ng women who wants to make themselves men. Pwede na. In fact, of all, problema karon ang Congress of the Philippines instead of two nga Babae lalaki, naglima na. Hinoon ang kategori sa mga tao. So, na problema na kay you have to make five comfort rooms for different kinds of people. Di gani maka-afford ang country maghimo ang two. One comfort room per barangay. Lima pa ka comfort room. <laughs> so, absurd. Absurd. Because when God created, He did not create five classifications of men and women he only created two and then another question can God undo or change his eternal plans okay the plan of God is to save the world can he change that a little bit maybe he can can he not change that uh, Philippines will will uh, be better than the Philippines now or that America you know uh, will be sinless not sinful like people are trying to think about America today. Can he create the world where there will be no communism or rich or poor? Can he? So putting all this together, these are wrong illusions about God. They are actually wrong statements, wrong beliefs about God. So think that God is wise and correct. There are no in-betweens between everything that God has created. Ne never should you think that there are things that could be change changeable in this world because God created a perfect world. So that leads us to a letter C here. Showing his absolute power. So the absolute power of God is, of course, number one creation. He created from nothing. How could you create from nothing? Because in the beginning, there was nothing at all. And then the first thing that God has to create is light. Let there be light. Because if there is no light, nothing can be created. 
in the world without light. So everything must start with light because God is light. And after there is light, so God, you know, designed the universe, the planets, the suns. So our earth, you know, started with that. It was a piece of light that God made to shrink and harden. And so there was land and seas and mountains and countries which uh, we find today. So that's it. So creation of God, if he did not create you and me, we would not be here. Another thing here that I wrote uh, is this. Establishing, you know, nations and peoples and governing things. He established the darkness. The Lord said, okay, darkness, you stay there. Light, he said, you stay there. And so he made the sun give light. And so these planets would go around the sun. One part, a few number of years will be daytime, so it's light. Then another number of hours will be dark. It will be night. And so the same thing is true in many other galaxies and stars and solar systems that cannot be counted in the whole universe. And then we go on to the time of Christ. Miracles of Jesus Christ. So many of them. Luke chapter 11, verse 20. He chose men so that they will help him in preaching the gospel and he gave them the power to do miracles. He himself started all the miracles. So the first miracle, what was the first miracle? Could you remember your Bible drill? What is the first miracle done by the Lord? Huh? The miracle at Cana. Well, that's the first miracle. And then the next, next uh, occasion that God talked with another man, a senator. Uh, who was, what was the name of the senator where God talked with in John chapter 3? Who was he? Huh? Nicodemus. Where he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And where the most important verse in the whole Bible is John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So miracles of Jesus Christ. And he extended these miracles to me. The day I was born again, you. The day you believed the Lord Jesus Christ and you were born again. The day you were baptized in your church. The day you got married. The day you had children. The day you decided what you would like to do with your life. Maybe an engineer or an agriculturist or a doctor or a nurse, whatever. So all those things, you know, God showed his absolute power in you. And then another marvelous thing to show his omnipotence, Paul said the last power is death. You know, man could fight anything, any problem. He could solve it. But there's only one problem that man cannot solve. Death. Kamatayun. No one among us can solve death. But you know God, because he is God, he solved death. By what? Resurrection. So you read the famous chapter of resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Could you memorize some of the verses there? Beautiful verses. The Lord said, it's wonderful to have the resurrection. And then for us today, because there is power of the resurrection, when we go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16, and all the other verses in the New Testament, for us, not only, it's not only the resurrection, it's also the work of the gospel. That means salvation through Jesus Christ. So I have been saved because I believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been saved and become a member of the church, baptized in the name of the Lord, because you believe in the gospel, that Jesus Christ, you know, came and lived, and then he was judged, and then uh, nailed to the cross, and then he rose again. That's the gospel in a nutshell. And that's a very important truth that governs all our faith and our everything that we do today. 
That's the reason we are here, to worship the Lord. So God is omnipotent, absolute. He's not only omnipotent. He's beyond that. He is uh, omnipotent, absolute. You, that means you don't only think about anything that is beyond the capacity of man, absolute things, omnipotent things, but omnipotent absolute means including the things you have not thought about, including the thoughts that I have not thought about, God could do that, including all the things that man has not thought about, God could still do them. So that's why the proper term in theology is ab- omnipotence absolute. So now it leads us to the second and the final thought here. If our God is all-powerful and omnipotent, so God's omnipotence applied to our lives today. So if God is omnipotent, what about that? What has that to do with me? First of all, recognize him as God. He is God because I believe and trust him as my personal Savior. That's what the Lord said, Matthew 19, 26. So you have to believe him, recognize him as God, but you have to accept him as your Savior. And uh, believe the Son of God, and you will be blessed by the Father in heaven with the gift of salvation. Another one, Matthew 20, verse 20, towards the end there. Also, Matthew chapter 4, verse 20, the Lord said, Okay, if I gave you salvation, forgave your sins, I will give you heaven. So what do you do now? The Lord told his disciples, you leave all and follow me. Well, the disciples did that. How about you? You're not a disciple. How about you? You're not a pastor. You're not a Bible woman. Yes, anybody, any Christian can still leave all and follow him. As you leave all, that means you remain as an engineer or a business person or agriculturist, whatever, or a doctor or a nurse, you can remain that way, but it will always from now on, God first for you, that means it's like living all and uh, following him and doing his perfect will. So, this is how we apply the omnipotence of God, because if we don't apply, you know, our surrender to him, that means we don't believe his omnipotence. If you want to, to succeed with your own strength, with your own plan, with your own pride, with your own ambition, that means you have not believed His omnipotence. That's why you still, I still believe on myself. But oh, He is omnipotent. So I better surrender to Him. And the final thought here, the second. He gives His power in missions. So after He saved us, after he wants us to leave him, leave everything and follow him, he wants us to go on a mission. So matagusan nato my mission. What is your mission that the Lord has assigned to you? So number one year in the notes, answer the call. Isaiah 6, 8. The Lord said to Isaiah, He said, okay, Isaiah, I'm calling you. And the Lord, uh, Isaiah said to the Lord, Lord, what shall I do? He said, uh, you come. And then you follow me. And then I will give you the mission that uh, you want to know. Well, of course, Isaiah was, became a, a prophet. And he was a very, very great prophet. Also a very great writer. In fact, many beautiful ser- uh, verses in the Bible that we memorize, like Isaiah 53. Isaiah 118, Isaiah 46, and the others are beautiful verses to encourage us to serve the Lord. And it's part of his calling. And today, these verses also speak, speak to us. And then the Lord also said, You go in this thy might. Acts 1.8, Ye shall receive power. And then he said, Acts 1.8, The Holy Spirit will be upon you. And I will give you all the power that you need to go and serve me. 
So as Christian, are you now filled with the Spirit? So you tell, Pastor, hindi ko ya filled with the Spirit. Hindi man ko pastor. Hindi man ko pastor's wife. You know, the filling of the Spirit is for every Christian. Whether you are called to the ministry or you are just an ordinary Christian, a business person or a student, the Lord has given you power and you must claim the power of the Holy Spirit. Just like, uh, you know, everything that shines in this room right now is being run by electricity. There are small lights. There are also floodlights here in stages that are very bright. Well, the small lights, you know, will require only, you know, a small amount of wattage to shine. Now the other spotlights here, they will require more. The other, you know, lights like the light of the air airplane, it will re require, you know, much, much more power, wattage, to shine ahead of the, the jet plane as it is flying in the atmosphere at night. And so, but they all come from the same power, the power of electricity. So the power of the Christian is the same, the power of the spirit. Though, of course, when you are a more mature Christian, you will have more power. Just like the flashlight that is bigger flashlight, it has more batteries. So if you are now a more consecrated and dedicated Christian, your light becomes, you know, very bright and it could reach a distance already, great distance. So you have more of the wattage that God has given you, but it is the same power, the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Christian should grow and grow and grow so that your power will grow. But don't say, Lord, uh, Pastor, I'm afraid to have power. I do not want to be powerful. I, I'm just a very humble Christian. So is that correct thinking? That if you are a humble Christian, you don't have want to have power? No, the Lord said, every Christian must have power, otherwise he could not, you know, control his emotions or discipline his sins and his uh, uh, evil ambitions. He cannot uh, battle against Satan and the devil. He, he has no power. He must have the power. So, he has to answer the call. He has to go in the might of the Lord. And then number three, he must believe in his support. Support. Philippians 4.19 My God shall supply all your needs. Now what was the word that Paul wrote? You used in Philippians 4.19 the word all. So, what do you mean by all? Does it mean some? Or does it mean almost? <laughs> Or that, does it mean less? Or does it mean few? When uh, Paul said all power is given to us, that means all, 100%. Power of electricity like the way it runs through the flashlight or the, the big, uh, you know, uh, floodlights. The same power. So we have to, all I have to always to turn on my my, my mind, my heart, my soul to the Lord. You know, if you are holding the flashlight, but you don't turn it up on, I mean, the battery is there, the bulb is there, it's closed, it's a new flashlight, but it will not shine. What do you do? You have to turn it on. So turn it on is, means surrender. Obey. Allow the Lord to go, run through your life with His power. And whether you are a young Christian or a mature Christian or old Christian, He will give you the same power. And as you grow in the Lord, your light will become brilliant and powerful. At first, it only reaches a few feet ahead of you, but later on it will reach to hundreds or thousands of distance, of kilometers, because your power is very, very powerful. You know, stars are very powerful lights from the universe. Our sun is a star. So how much? It's 93 million miles from the earth, the sun. How long does it take for one burst of light from the sun to come to the earth? So the scientists say about three or two, four seconds. But what about 
stars in the Milky Way, they are, their distance from the earth is immeasurable. So they have always been shining there in the skies since the day the Lord created the universe. How long will it take, you know, the stars from the Milky Way, their light to come to the earth, and then when I look at, in the, at night, I will see the stars, you know, in the Milky Way or other galaxies there. Scientists say many of these stars, because they are so distant, some, some of them, their light come to the earth in 10,000 years. <laughs> some of them come to the earth in about 500 years. Even, you know, their light reached the earth for 10,000 years. Some even now that are in the farthest galaxies beyond the vision of man, they would even reach millions of years for their lights to come to the earth. So, you know, so light that runs in 186,000 miles per second would reach, they're so far, the, their light would reach millions until we can see them on the earth. That's why the stars, you know, their light is twinkle at night because they are so distant, they twinkle because they pass through the atmosphere and then through vacuum. But the stars that don't twinkle, that means they are very near the earth. So planets don't twinkle when you look at Jupiter or Mercury or Mars at night. They don't twinkle because they are planets and they are not so far from the earth. But oh, you know, it does not matter with the Lord how far it is because he is so powerful and believe that he can do anything. In instant, you know, the moment God decides anything in earth, instantly it is in earth. I mean in heaven, instantly the decision comes to the earth immediately. And so... That's how near heaven is from the earth, from the standpoint of God and his power. And our prayer is just like that, faster than light, our prayer. Because when I can pray now, and then the Lord will hear and grant my prayer. And then, so number four here, we must get involved in church missions. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter uh, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your, neighbor, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Serve the Lord now. And so the Lord will give you the power for missions, power to serve Him, power to support missions, power to pray for souls, power to uh, help the church grow in the Lord. So is that how? powerful the mission of the church is how about you as member of the church are you capable of that so going back to our topic our all powerful God in other words our omnipotent God so today as we serve the Lord in mission for missions you can have the money to support if you want to just ask if you want to give time to be involved in mission in the afternoon, we have Bible clubs already. You can get involved. And the rest of the week, you can go to your office and work there. But every Sunday, you could serve the Lord. So there are many opportunities for missions because our God is all-powerful. The thing that is important is our willingness, our uh, dedication, and uh, promise to the Lord. So one more verse I would like to share with you right now. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14. Paul wrote that as he wrote in Corinthians. Corinthians in the New Testament is one of uh, the most uh, uh, deep writings in the New Testament that covers, you know, the plan of God from the beginning to the end. 1 Corinthians. Very, very... Uh, uh, deep writing of the Apostle Paul and I read here uh, I mean this time Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14 it says here for the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus 
that if one died for all, then we're, we're all dead. 15, and he died for all, that those who live should not live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. That's a more simple and more clear translation from the New King James that I am reading from for you right now. So the love of God, which is also ruled by the almightiness of God, his all power, is the love that God uses for us to reach out to the world so that we could be a witness for the Lord. So the love of God compels me. The love of God uh, constrains me. It means if you are so in love, you cannot stop yourself. If you are so in love with God, you cannot stop yourself from serving Him. If you are so in love with souls, you cannot stop yourself from winning them to the Lord. If you are so in love with the work of the Lord, you cannot stop yourself from volunteering in the different missions of the church. If you are so in love with God, you cannot stop praying every day for the work of the Lord, for your family, for your workers, for your friends, so that they too would come to the Lord. So our all-powerful God is only a prayer away. He is only so omnipotent that even just a prayer will, you know, make him throw down, pour out his power upon us, his omnipotence upon us. So whatever our problems, problems of discouragement, disappointments, of worldliness, it's nothing to the Lord. Just yield to the Lord. His all power will conquer that for you. Just yield to him and follow him. And as you want to give to him and be involved in mission, that's not, no, not a problem with him. Just yield yourself to him, be faithful, and listen and pray and get involved and do your assignment and do it joyfully and uh, excitedly and do it faithfully to the end. This is the meaning of our all-powerful God. And so, just like our theme for the month of missions, the love of God constrains me. So remember the day you, when you were in love with someone, you cannot stop thinking about the person. You cannot stop from courting the person. You can stop from telling that person, I want to marry you. You cannot stop the person. I mean, you cannot, you cannot stop yourself by saying, well, let's get married now. <laughs> I have the savings, I have the money, I have asked permission from our father and mother, or the pastor, let's get married. So the love constrains. In the same way, the love of God constrains us. It is so powerful, it's not good to fight against anything that is so powerful. Because God is powerful, okay, work with Him. Because love is so powerful, okay, fall in love with the love of God. Because missions is so powerful. Okay, Lord, tell him, give me the love for souls, for missions. And oh, may the, the all power of your love will, the almighty God will move me to go and do my part. Are you willing to do your part? Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for your word and the challenge it gives us. May we always surrender to the greatest love of all and the most intelligent wisdom of all because as we do this Lord all power is with us there will never be faith failure to the man who obeys the Lord in Jesus name Amen